No, 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 no heroes. No, 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 no heroes. No heroes, baby. Hello, guys, and welcome to another deck profile. Today we got our champion, our regional champion, no heroes, one th over 1,000 player regional champion, and he's managed to win the whole tournament with Zoro. Yeah. So just introduce yourself. Yeah. I'm Herwe, I'm from Croatia, from Zagreb, where we have a really strong locals. So shout out to Magic Commons and Carta Magica locals and all the people who play there, because they're all really good. Um, yeah, so me and my friends, Christian and Vlatko, we traveled here and tested together with the Silent Zoro because we felt it was the the most stable leader to play. Like, Whitebeard is very strong, but it kind of feels like in the mirror and especially against counter matchups, you're very much at the mercy of your draws and like whether, the, whether your opponent had removal or not. And Zoro just doesn't have that issue, like you control how you take life. It just feels very good and Christian was like very proficient with it in OP2 as well. Uh, so yeah. I just felt like the safest pick and a very strong one, which obviously proved to be, so yeah, of course. let's just get into the deck profile. Let's go. Uh, so obviously for Izo, because we're playing the Wybeard Pirates variant, uh, and you want to maximize the searchers. For Buggy, for a similar reason, just uh, uh, the fact that he's slash resistant actually, funnily enough, came up a few times, like one Zoro opponent attacked into it with his leader in like round 6 or 7 when we were both XO, which was a misplay by him, but yeah, obviously people forget sometimes. Uh, for Makino because yeah, she she three don of value for one card for one don is yeah. crazy in right situations. Uh, Otama just reduction package together with Gordon. You Fire Fist is an insane card. This enables it in a lot of situations where you just trade so heavily into your favor. Uh, like block her lot. There's so much stuff. And of course, eighteen one costs the Dadan to search them all. Uh, the Dadan is just. Yeah, I think self-explanatory as well. Easily becomes a 5k attack with the one dollar investment. Uh, then we're getting into a bit of a cute text, tech position, like tech spots. Uh, two Fossa, because yellow is kind of problematic because you have to aggro them down. You have to go 7-7-7-7. Seven, 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 seven. But the issue is if they hit a lot of triggers, they can like hit you back. They can kill you. And having searchable blockers helps with that. And in a way, this in a lot of matchups, in a lot of situations, this compensates for the loss of three blocker Marcos uh, on the list. It kind of feels like you're playing the worst version of the deck, but it's still good enough to perform. Then the Harutas and Blomenko. Uh, these used to be three Harutas, but then Christian convinced me to put in one Blomenko instead, just because having the option of the reduction is sometimes really good. Uh, again, against the yellow, white beard, green, even Dofi. I believe it came up against Dofi in... Uh, in the top four feature match, I don't remember real. And Haruta, the thing, like these are both seemingly similar cards, but Blamenko, he needs to attack to gain value and you need to attach Dawn. And that's not always convenient because a lot of cards you want to take out, they're 6k power. And if you attack five into four, it's not very efficient. So you kind of want to attack leader and have something else attack into the 4k rest of the unit. And then you need these on the board to actually utilize that. And yeah, you need to attack with him, that's like the biggest thing. Whereas Haruta just stands on the board and whether you attack with it or not, it just get, generates value, lets you pressure. So I was very happy with both of these. This one got played a lot more, but I was happy that this was included. Then only one Rush Zoro as a Rush unit. Uh, I wanted to include the second one, but couldn't find the space. In a lot of situations, he's effectively... You play him and you gain one life because your opponent has to deal with him because of how powerful he is. Uh, the main use case scenario that I kept this one for, and the reason it's Rush Zora and not Rush Luffy, is when you go in mirror, when you go second because you lost roll, we believe going first in the mirror is very favorable. Uh, when you go second, on four you have the option to attack with leader for five or six depending on whether you have a one cost search or not. And then you play this, attack with this as well. And then if your opponent wants to Marco, they cannot kill this because you're going to defend it with 1k counter easily. And if they decide to deal with it, you get to Marco first. And getting to Marco first in the mirror is quite a substantial advantage. Um, and for Jozu, uh, I know 3 or 4 is debatable, but it's like the most searchable 2k counter, which we'll get to later. Uh, one blocker Marco, the reason this card is limited is just busted. <laughs> uh, the main card of the deck, the, the reason you win games. like. Good guy. Just wow. Crazy and then card. also something some Zoro, Zoros don't run. I really like the security he provides against against blue, against green, against Whitebeard especially. Like a lot of games where you drop this against Whitebeard, you just insta win. Because they are not going to be able to counter out. Uh, they are not going to be able to damage you very much. So you have like you buy a full turn of value and still kick cards out of their hands. And yeah, I think 
you skip your own turn, but you basically skip your opponents because there's so many punishes, especially with this. If you have both of these, like attack with this on seven, they have to deal with it, and then you you have extra life because they dealt with this, and then you slam this, and you just won the game in the mirror as well. Um, then for the events, uh, three Wabi Pirates, just uh, yeah, increase consistency to find the best card in the deck. Uh, it was two initially. Once again, Christian convinced me to swap out. Uh, what was it? Pistol. One one pistol for the third. This we didn't want to go for because it does cog. It's like there's diminishing returns, but in, in consistency boost is very important. And the reason this card is like so good is because it gives you a pathway to Marco from buggy. So you can Marco this, this, and that's something I think a lot of people underestimate when they consider the card. Uh, three fire fist. This card is gas. Like they they printed. <laughs> that card, for some reason, you can see me on feature matches just pull my opponents out every time I activate this card, it's just blow out. Um, four guard points and one radical beam for the defensive events, and one jet pistol as another form of removal. It came up quite a few times that, you know, you don't really need four fire fists. If you see two fire fists together, it's always the same option, and you don't necessarily want to cast it. This lets you take out a singular unit. Um, it's especially useful when combined with Otama or... Um, Blamenko against Yellow because it takes out their 7 cost mom, their, their Katakuri, and it just lets you con uh, maintain board presence without like uh, investing too much cards. Where Fire Fist is like always two cards, this is one card and a reduction. And yeah, that's it for the list. Uh, for the matchups in the Swiss, I played, I went 10 0, I played 5 Whitebeards, uh, 3 Zoros, 1 uh, Yamato, and 1 Crocodile. Crocodile in round 9, by the way. Like, that guy performed really well. Then in top cut it was Oh, No, sorry, first Smoker 2-0. Oh, 2-0. Oh, oh. Whitebeard 2-1. I got a bit lucky in that one. Like, my last life was this in game 1, so I managed to survive. Then in top... Uh, yeah, top 8 was Whitebeard, top 4 was Doffy, and the uh, finals against Black Luffy in the feature, because that yeah. guy's just, like, insanely good as a player. And yeah, shout out to Justin. Him, like, Crazy player. He's incredible. Yeah, yeah uh, Vlatko also played the deck. And I mean, we all play the same list, but Vlatko also got top cut. He sadly lost mirror. In top yeah, I lost mirror in top 32. Didn't find my Marco first game, then won one, lost one after that, and that is it. I initially wanted to play a similar list. They convinced me to play this exact one, and it was proven to be the right choice. Yeah, and you won against me. It was also nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I lost three games in the, in the Swiss rounds, mm -hmm. even though I built a deck. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, the, the guys played extremely well. Yeah. He, uh, he won two serial Luffy's in the past. He's no slouch, but oh. I mean, it wasn't uh, his day. Today it wasn't, uh, it wasn't me, yeah. But uh, yeah, the deck performed really great. Uh, I, I would add one more thing to, to what Herba said regarding the list. Uh, a lot of players play a lot of Gordons and um, Zoros. And what I keep forgetting is that actually the deck really, really struggles with 1k counters. Because all of your 1k counters are the cards you want to play. Uh, and therefore, adding some cards which are actually 1k counters is really important. Because oftentimes you are either stuck with 2k's and then the opponent can uh, abuse that fact that he knows you don't have any 1k's. So yeah, that was the problem we encountered with the deck. The deck really struggles with keeping 1k counters in hand. Uh, therefore, there's really tough to find space for non-counter cards, and we much rather uh, replace them with uh, 1k counters. Zoro is probably the slot which a lot of Zoro players uh, try to stick with him. They play two or three, but I think that uh, adding some 1k's is one of the most important changes we made to the deck. Yeah, perfect say. So just uh, congrats again, you are the champion now. Thank you. From uh, our our big event and uh, maybe uh, yeah you can say do you like the event do you like the location oh yeah um, no heroes as I've said in the previous interview like they are the by far the best organizer for the offline events I know Raven Trade is really good for online yeah but uh, no heroes like the web page for the tickets always smooth like if you want to take it you're basically guaranteed to get one dude the, the best ringtone okay we'll get to that we we'll get to that <laughs> um, uh, where was I yeah, uh, the capacity, like, 
other regional hosts don't host 1k player events. It's insane that you know, Heroes does and it does them so well. Uh, this space obviously once again well yeah, Just provided. a quick showing. Nice. It's unbelievable. Air conditions. The air conditions. Yeah, yeah. Like crazy. Conditions and it's hot. It's hot in Germany. Day. The toilets yeah. huge and yes. very clean all day. Just like every player need was met, I feel. And yeah, I got a bit lucky and I won the tournament. So I'm happy I did it. Crazy. Here. So just a perfect uh, weekend for you guys and for us also. Thank you for the deck profile and to, uh, again, congrats to winning. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like there, leave a comment there if you've got some questions. And yeah, just thank you and goodbye.